Trisha Curtis joins me now with Petra Nerds. We're here, of course, at the International Energy Forum in Riyadh, and this is at the conclusion to of the Outlooks um, examination, really looking at both of the outlooks. Trisha, how important is it that we take the time here at the International Energy Forum to actually examine both of these outlooks together? I think it's extremely important, and today I'm here to speak about basically U.S. shale and the issues of understanding U.S. shale in depth, how much is being produced, what people understand about it, what they don't understand about it, and how it sort of fits into this potentially peak oil demand future. And of course, uh, the viewpoints here are coming from around the world, but the shale situation, of course, is it's really a game changer. This was not the situation a few years ago when we looked at the energy outlooks and they didn't really have to consider it many years ago. So how big a game changer is it actually when they look to the future? It's a huge game changer. So it wasn't in previous outlooks, and I still think the last two years of this oil price downturn, a lot of changes have taken place in the U.S. to make it even more resilient. Um, and I think it's going to continue to be a placeholder in, in the benchmarks that these um, these international groups have to deal with. Um, and it's going to continue to we're going to continue to see robust and rising production out of the U.S. Now, taking the time to actually examine the outlooks, both of them independent outlooks, not always converging on the same figures, but over the years, are you beginning to see a bit more convergence in terms of how they're looking at maybe the base figures and looking at the models? Yeah, I think um, for the, globally, I think the outlooks are, are you know, core correlating to one another. I think in terms of U.S. shale, though, there's always um, a discrepancy between the figures of, of where OPEC is on, on where they see U.S. shale output, where they see global shale output, um, and where you know U.S. figures put shale output and where other groups do. And that's because there's a lot of information that goes involved into the how we're thinking of how it's going to evolve, how technology is going to work, and how the producers adapt to it. Where do you see the role of the International Energy Forum in really keeping the, keeping the dialogue alive and making sure that uh, you know it, it, it's more of an intense dialogue, so to speak? I think it's, it plays a critical role. I mean, the International Energy Forum is going to allow groups and different stakeholders to come together and really discuss these things in a rigorous manner. And I think you'll see here today that's that's one of the things that's going to come out of this is that shale is one of those things that's a hot topic, but it's also controversial. Um, and you know, which direction it could go, up or down, is it, extremely um, important. And having groups into a room that can and talk about that and openly, I think it's very good. When we look at the current state of the market here, we're seeing some strength coming back into the price, um, a bit more demand on the market, but we're also seeing the, the shale players in the U.S. Uh, probably rubbing their hands in glee, looking at a higher price now. What's the situation? Are they going to come back in the market and the price is going to, to drop a bit, or will that actually cap the price in terms of bringing more supply on? Well, they already are coming back into the market, and with pretty rigorous force. Uh, I think that there's a potential that there could be some capping there. I mean, we are seeing, you know, a lot of rigs come online. We haven't seen yet, you know, in terms of well wells come online, in terms of completions and production. And the rise in production has really been from the Gulf of Mexico um, and from Alaska in the last several months. But we're going to start seeing that, and that could certainly be a cap on production, or a, a cap on prices. The agreement that's in place, though, this has actually strengthened the market. And from when you look at this from the American viewpoint, um, I would imagine that has been welcomed in many ways. Uh, just your views perhaps just on that and we can wrap it up. Absolutely. I think that the OPEC agreement has been uh, significant. I think that in terms of you know Saudi Arabia having major compliance with that and other nations as well, I think that's big. Um, and this sort of has to continue and that's certainly given strength to U.S. producers to show price signals that they can move forward with this. Um, and it'll be sort of a teeter-totter between you know the OPEC agreement and U.S. production. Okay, we'll watch it carefully. Thank you so much. Thank you.